mapenzi ni pite na we Iwe imara mara kwa ujenzi kukoto mawe Na umba sana sana kwa mwenyezi nizikwe na we Unangara ngara mbala mwezi sacha no my god I feel so lucky to have you in my life Oh my love You are the blessing bro for me from above Oh my love I'll be your man forever Will you be my wife to have you in my life oh my love you are the blessing god for me from above oh my love i'll be a man forever will you be my wife baba no i do need a minute away but get the full life suena suena sana sana suena maliza sana sana My heart twisting, holding a coffee, will be no number one interesting. Chungula macho mama, wanna wait up on an independent. Who wanna put a ring on your finger? What you always have an interest in your chinga? So I will listen to that tender. Basically, is uh, a technology that helps us to understand our world. Really, right from the data collection, where you pick everything, or you collect data for entirely, actually everything, and you go on and on in visualizing this, doing analytics to to the same, um, also doing some planning and design for the same, and finally making decisions. So it actually gives us that framework of decision making and our practice and so in this context we're actually talking about our <coughs> everything to deal with the water utilities or water right from all our assets of the meters up to the customer point and we actually presenting one of what we are calling a system of systems not only a software for the GIS people in a GIS lab to do some mapping or some editing, but it's actually a system for everyone in the organization. A system that helps us to keep our record, the data management, very key. I had some conversations about data. Data is actually very important core. And so for the water, you're talking about that network 
asset uh, management, which you have need to have what we are calling uh, one single source of truth for the organization that shows everything as far as the data is concerned. And then a system of engagement where you have everybody else now linking to that database or to that data and they read from the same script what the billing is seeing, what the commercial, uh, basically the commercial guys are seeing is the same thing that the engineers are seeing, the maintenance and everybody else, and even the decision maker, they should be seeing the same, same information as they collaborate, whether they're in the office or in the field or in the boardroom. And finally, of course, the insight, the different ana analytics that you have from the same, same system. So that's basically what a GIS should be able to do for a utility organization. The next thing, uh, just basically going to the deep of the same, right from the asset management, looking at the safety, um, uh, um, the innovation that come to it, and just talking a, a little bit, a, a bit about the innovation, what my uh, friend or colleague from Saf uh, Safaricom actually was talking about, these are one and several other things that could be done on top of these, the innovations that come with it. In the world of today, without innovation, it's actually coming to a, you're actually like working yesterday if there are no innovation. And so we have to think about each and everything that we have to do different in our system, in our networks, in our management operations and everything else that, that, that we do. And finally, of course, <clears throat> we also have our customers. I haven't had as more talking about, well, more talking about our customers, but you also want to think about, at the end of the day, what we are doing uh, to serve the interest of the customers. But of course, we also have a business interest on the other hand. And business interest can only be enhanced or it can only be successful when the customer is successful. And everything that relates to customer, of course, serving them well, they have their, their water, they have their, uh, their, their, their bill at the right time, their complaints are addressed, there are other issues, applications, and everything else is all addressed at the same time. And the point is that the GIS being at the core that aligns everything to the business strategies that the WSPs and the water uh, or the general uh, water industries are having. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> I'll, I guess there's a, there's a lag. <laughs> All right. So, these are basically just the, the details which some of them have been talked of uh, since yesterday. The different critical business drivers that we are looking at. Some of them we've been talking about since yesterday be it you're looking at um, the compliance issues, the productivity, the financials, uh, and thank God I've seen um, the NBK have been here. That's very great. And so you want to ensure that everything makes sense at the end of the day. Everything adds into one another, and you're looking at your organization and GIS as one thing that empowers or enables all the workflows in your organization, be it in terms of the rates, the issues of cost cutting, capital, uh, 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 capital investments, and many other things that we are talking about. Uh, upgrading the system or the upgrading the grid or the networks, and all those have to be actually synchronized and aligned in that one system. Next slide. At the end of the day, you are looking at the network. Uh, you're no looking at all the other different things that you want to take advantage of in GIS as far as non-revenue water is, is, is concerned. And so right from your asset management. And here I wanted to say that the network is actually the core of everything else that we are talking about. Right from, let's call it the reservoir or the source of water to the meter or to the customer Everything that happens in between, there must be a serious or a, an integrity to the same. Is it okay? Do we know the status of each and every asset that you put? Is it the meters, the, 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 the pipes, different types of pipes, and every other information, attribute information about them that help us to maintain them? But at the same time, even if you are bringing the other innovations to them, 
it is SCADA or the sensors or other IoT devices that I've seen people nowadays putting, even RFIDs, I've also seen others using that, then it's all onto this network. And so this is one foundation or fundamental uh, thing as far as uh, the utilities and the operations for the same is, is concerned. And then from there, of course, we go to the operation management, the real time, uh, and everything else. Real time in terms of how you maintain, how you manage uh, the meter reading and everything else. And even knowing what happens with your water at any one time. I liked what he was talking about, uh, Isaac, that <clears throat> uh, I think that was last night, that even the water consumption you could be in a position to know every minute, if you want, or every day. But those are things that have to happen real time. And then communications, and then the SPAT systems that you put on top of it. And so you want to think about those as the core things that you plug into your utilities. The next, uh, next slide. Um, just a, dive, a deep dive into the... Uh, the system of record or the asset management where we're actually talking about how to actually make these to run kind of your organization because we are dealing with the water over here so you have to model the network using what we have, uh, the utility network uh, data model that help us to have the right data in the system. And that's actually key. Once you have the data model, then of course you pump in the data, the right data, current data, and of course complete data and all the other uh, QC, QA for, for the data system. I would like to kind of jump very fast because uh, I've been told time is short and uh, we also need to integrate together with a live demonstration. I would like to take a, a, a jump to almost the second last slide, if not the third last slide. Um, because I believe uh, he's, yes, so <clears throat> go back. Uh, so these are the Okay, yeah, so these are some of the things that once we have an, uh, uh, an integrity into your network powered by GIS that some of the uh, WSPs I've seen talking about, then you are able to do all this, your leak detections and reporting for the same, um, the field personnel, able to work with them real time, uh, doing your isolations, and other situation awareness that you could also always do, and of course, your communication, because communication is key over here. And then, <clears throat> the next step, uh, just to show you uh, uh, different examples of what other people have done. Next slide. Uh, using the same, same system, be it they're managing their uh, network, uh, doing their network management, distribution management, uh, field inspections, and many others are the examples of what other utilities are doing out there. And these are also powered by, the next slide, some of the solution templates that we already have that you just need to configure. You don't have to develop these from the scratch because technology now is available for us. And so you do these configurations and there you go, you should be able to get your results in, within a very short period of, of time. And of course, home on the next slide. Back here, home, then you realize that there are also some few uh, organizations, not only in Kenya, but also across the region that are taking advantage of, of these solutions. Um, uh, and look at, over here, I think I have an, a national water uh, and sewerage company in Kampala. Uh, Athi Waterworks are also having very nice dashboards over there of just monitoring everything else that they are doing. And this, the last one was actually a very interesting story, uh, Isaac, uh, <coughs> of a prototype that we were doing with, uh, with, uh, with uh, smart metering with a company called Upepo and uh, Safaricom. So the colors are really suggestive on <laughs> who was in that. And so <coughs> it's all to bring the integrated uh, systems together into managing our water utilities. And just, just to mention in this uh, meeting that 
one of the of my take home you know lesson learns are all, also there one of my take home is that working with different entities working together to really come up to deal with the non revenue water or water issues i mean it's not a one do it all solution or system uh, and so having the bank to finance because again we've had all these I don't want to call them stories, but we've had all these reasons as to why some of the things we are talking about could not be implemented. One, finances. Yes, they're needed, but there's no money to do that, or it takes time to do it. While it is taking time to do it, the loss is already being incurred every day. And so having the financier, having innovation, and other stakeholders together to do this is very keen. And that's, that's my take home, and I think we'll be following that up. So <clears throat> last but not least, as I Asha and my colleague is, really when you think about this system that you're talking about, we, talking about the budgets and the uh, affordability and all that, we actually came up with what we are calling the small, to, uh, small water utilities uh, system for most of our WSPs. That actually gives you unlimited software licensing plus the other things, implementation, support, and, and, and training for the same. We could, and by that, you actually get everything else that I've been talking about, the system of system. And the system of system actually do not work in isolation. I really need to mention this, as I ask my colleague Godfrey, that you have to bring other things. You need a billing system. You need the hardware, including even the IoT devices, which we don't have. And so <laughs> all of them, the good thing is that they're inter, they are inter, all integratable. You bring them all together and you have your complete system all together. And that's really a powerful thing that I have to mention. Let's you take, go out and say that he said when you have GIS, you have everything. When you have GIS, you have some of the things. You need other things. But the good thing is that you integrate, you bring them all together into one integrated water management system. And so, um, I believe I was to usher him in, uh, the MC. Let me not break any protocol. <laughs> so, <laughs> let me quickly take it back to the MC, and then he ushers us back, uh, or directors, in the right way. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We can be able to have a heard of. Yeah, actually had uh, requested, because we have been just talking, they would like to have a practical intervention or a demonstration to show exactly how we can be able to handle this animal we are calling the non revenue uh, water. And therefore, we are giving them an extra five, only five minutes. My, where is, where is he? My timekeeper, please. Five, only five. Yes. Okay, well, uh, thank you so much for that uh, opportunity. So me, for me, I'll do a quick uh, demonstration of uh, what uh, we are promoting. Uh, as ESRI, we are promoting uh, geospatial solutions that can be integrated with anything and anything that, is, that has a location. And for this matter, we are looking at a system of record uh, that you can be able to develop with our data models that are within the ArcGIS. So basically what you are seeing here is the desktop so, uh, software that is uh, displaying uh, some kind of uh, very beautiful figures there that you can be able to see. So whatever you are seeing there is a data model for uh, any kind of uh, a water utility company that it can be able to be adopt adopted. For this case, uh, for this uh, data modeling, you should be able to have uh, water pipes uh, of various types, uh, like the distribution pipes, the service pipes, and they should be uh, interconnected to every kind of asset that are on, on that uh, network. So at the end point, this is where the customer is connected to the entire network. So for that, if I click there, you should be able to get some details or any kind of details that you've been able to incorporate into your system of record. And one of these animals that are really affecting water companies is that they have data, yes, but some of these data are not, uh, that doesn't have spatial location. So they, couldn't, uh, they cannot re easily locate where these customers are and which are status of these uh, customer meters 
uh, at that time. And again, within this system of record, uh, if I open uh, attributes uh, tables here, the database table, because this is where uh, all information of that entire customer is input into the system, and even the, the entire network, the pipes, the, uh, the meters, the fittings, just entirely everything that goes into the GIS uh, platform for our water company. So for this case here, this data model is, uh, uh, is uh, intelligent enough to really help you in terms of just quickly downloading it for, from uh, every site, and you can easily configure uh, depending on your on, on your preference, like for this case here, uh, it's been uh, developed in a way that uh, has a pre uh, pre prepared uh, domains that you can be able just to select uh, or choose from that, and then you are able to populate your database very easily. So uh, I would urge for our water company just to ensure that they are able to adopt the Esri uh, water distribution uh, utility network model. It's a new concept that is uh, we are really promoting. You really want to ensure that all the water companies that can they can be able to adopt this uh, kind of a model. So, uh, as our CEO has said, uh, that uh, ArcGIS is an interconnected system, and uh, they it, it it really promotes a, a centralized concept whereby anything that you are doing on your desktop, you have a replica of it uh, on the on the on the internet or their website. So, the next phase is uh, to have that system of engagement, and this system of engagement, it doesn't really require a lot of uh, programming. You just need to know how to do configurations, and uh, all these templates are available on the ArcGIS system. Once you purchase the desktop software, you will be able to have an access to the ArcGIS online, or basically just a portal for the ArcGIS. And some of these application, web applications, you should be able to get on that uh, ArcGIS uh, System. So this is basically just a, a ArcGIS hub site, which is basically just a website that is really showing um, some of the apps that you can be able to use uh, for managing and revenue water losses. So for this case, the entire network that you've been able to map using your desktop, you should be able to have uh, the same maps, you can be able to access the same maps online, and these maps are very interactive rather than having those hard copy maps that you cannot even query or you cannot be able to, in case of maybe there's uh, uh, rains, that they've been, uh, your maps have been rained on, so you cannot work in the field. So this basically really helps the field people to use their smartphones in terms of uh, data collection, inspection of the meters, and be able to update uh, that particular task they are carrying out. So the other aspect that, uh, that are important uh, item that you can be able to get on the on the ArcGIS system is um, so, so just a minute because it needs a sign in. So the other th aspect is uh, you can have a, a dashboard uh, that really comes uh, already prepared for you just to have a template that you can really easily configure to be able to report uh, non-revenue non water losses. And uh, this dashboard can be updated uh, real-time or, or near real-time using your, your mobile device. We have a software called the ArcGIS Field Maps that can be able to use to report leakages. Maybe you have uh, people who are going to the field just to ensure they are able to inspect uh, the entire uh, water routes so that they could be able to detect uh, leakages that are happening there, and then this could be able to be reported uh, almost immediately into the office, and the operation manager for that can be able to respond uh, to those leakages very fast. So the other item is... Uh, the other item is... Uh, is uh, is uh, you can be able to also have uh, analysis of the monthly water balance. Uh, and this is just basically some of the workflows that I would urge a water company to be able to be doing them uh, more often so that it can be able to monitor uh, water losses that uh, could be occurring uh, maybe from the commercial side or um, yeah, from the, from the billing or from the leakages. So from this dashboard, you can be able to have, uh, it, gives you, it gives you a summary view of, uh, 
uh, authorized consumption of the entire uh, water network. Uh, we can be able to get things like build uh, authorized consumption, uh, apparent water loss, uh, water losses. So it simply breaks you down uh, in terms of data analysis rather than just having uh, an Excel or trying to do um, the manual way of handling data. So the other aspect is uh, that I wanted to display here is the leakage, uh, which I already think of. Uh. So the other method of uh, managing uh, leakages is to have uh, um, DMS. So this ArcGIS system can really help you in terms of uh, DMA delineation that you can be able to have uh, particular zones that you can be able to monitor in terms of how people are consuming water, in terms of pressure losses. For like this one here, we have uh, uh, a dashboard that's uh, showing, um, basically that is from the night flow analysis that you can be able to see uh, the pressure uh, differences uh, or like the potential GPM loss uh, from the expected GPM and the previous readings of the GPM from that uh, flow, uh, flow meters. So from that you can easily say that uh, if you, doesn't, you haven't seen, uh, you are seeing a difference in terms of uh, water consumption, then in that particular DMA you should be able to uh, go quickly to the ground and see whether there could be uh, leakages that are happening into the ground without you seeing. And basically the, the system of record that I've shown you is where you can have a, a historical view of your system, of your network so that you can be able to analyze uh, areas that need to be replaced, uh, the pipes that maybe they have gone through corrosion they need to replace. Then the very last uh, display here is uh, So the very last one. So basically what we are trying to uh, display here is that uh, ArcGIS is a system of systems and it's one integrated system. So the desktop solution that you have, anything that you do on your desktop, you can be able to easily publish to the cloud environment that you can be able to access it anywhere and at any time. So for these for these ones, uh, like uh, customer uh, service meter connections, you can easily have a dashboard that gives you a summary view of uh, uh, connections or the new connections of your customers. And basically, this can be done with the field operators who are connecting these customers to that entire network. They have a mobile application, either ArcGIS survey forms or the ArcGIS field maps. They can easily uh, populate uh, that uh, details of the customers and then those, once you submit uh, that uh, form, is able to populate uh, or, or analyze uh, those are those, uh, those dishes that you've captured on, on such kind of a, a, dash, a, a dashboard. So uh, I'll stop there. So basically ArcGIS is a system of systems that has been integrated from the field uh, to office and uh, you can be able to access it on any kind of a device, a mobile phone, you can be able to access it on your desktop, a computer, web applications uh, and many other that you want to access. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Wesley team. Let's give them a, a hand of applause. Thank you, thank you also for keeping time, although sometimes the presentation is so sweet, you don't want to stop it. But at, we, at least we can be able to see there is that uh, intervention, the practical intervention that we are really looking for. And WSP, we are being told, let's look, let's integrate the ESLI model and we'll be able to see our change as far as concerned. Next, please, I would like to call upon the Doshi team if they are able. Also, Doshi team are able to give us a, a practical also orientation as well as the non revenue is concerned, uh, tackling non revenue water practical interventions. Thank you, Kalibu Sana. Uh, uh, CEO uh, Wasreb, CEO uh, Kewi, and other guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
no? my presentation will be very short and uh, it has animations and i promise you that you will be it will be very easy to understand we come at the very tail end uh, we are uh, specialists in the applications point of view like uh, see you like the uh, what arcgis has just shown us is very interesting when we get that data uh, now we come and uh, apply Okay, we set for you the gadgets that you need to install in your system, like for pressure management, air management, and uh, there's another topic here that you'll see a gadget called the UFR. Okay, so uh, as I wait for my presentation to start. You can be telling us something about Doshi as awesome. we go on. <laughs> the about? Doshi. Oh, thank you. Uh, in uh, Doshi water, we manufacture uh, pipes locally, uh, UPVC pipes, HDP pipes, PPR pipes, and, uh, and bowl casings locally. And uh, in other solutions, we partner with uh, other world leading uh, companies. Uh, just as you've seen in our banner somewhere there. We, you, we have like George Fisher, Aquapipe, uh, ARI, Pioneer to provide other technical solutions, part of which I'll be able to demonstrate here. Uh, most of these uh, uh, solutions are also very technical. We work closely with the water companies. We visit their systems, understand the needs. Just a moment. So, Kaidri, for the other presenters, ensure that your presentation is with the, I mean, the, the, our so desk, I so that we will not be having these issues. I shared yesterday, I think maybe <laughs> we must have lost it. So I'll, I'll still be within my, the time, time frame. Uh, it's a short presentation. Good thing is that there are animations, and uh, it will be easy for us to understand the, the concepts that these uh, technologies op operate on. Got it. Right. 
ready. We are still waiting for the system to work on. Okay. Still waiting. But maybe it's a chance for us to have a, an energizer. I don't know. So that at least I can see some people have taken uh, tea and therefore they are maybe dozing off. So let's have an energizer as we wait for the system. Let's all of us wake up. And we are doing an energizer to do with non leavening water, and I want us to light non leavening water with our body. With our body. So, you, but for the old people, I can see there are some old people in there. We just light NW, NLW, so that we don't like the full name. So, can we start with N? Hey, some of us are not. Hey, N, please. I'm being told to demonstrate, so we can go on N. So the capital N, okay? Thank you for that refresher. Uh, now we'll pay uh, attention. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, it was discussed here, uh, next slide, uh, about uh, how to tackle uh, non-revenue water, not going into more de some of the, most of the things that have been discussed. Uh, next slide, please. But I want us to capture one very important uh, aspect in non-tackling uh, the physical losses that we encounter with the uh, pipe bus, okay? Uh, the quality of pipes that you purchase Okay, because having been in this uh, manufacturing industry, we know what happens. We are seeking support from the WSPs and uh, contractors and also and other clients, so other stakeholders, to pay more attention in uh, specifications. So, uh, next slide, please. Uh, the first topic will be on pipeline integrity. We are moving now from UPVC and HDP. HDP pipe is gaining popularity. Insist on that the pipeline has to be manufactured by uh, pre-compounded raw material, okay? I'll explain in the next slide, please. Because uh, the pre-compounded raw material will ensure that the lifespan of the HDP will last the service life, which is 50 years, okay? There's uh, uh, another raw material which is very cheap in the market. That is why you'll find very big price differences sometimes in the pipes in the, in the market. There's a very cheap raw material where they, you, 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 they mix the HDP virgin material and, uh, and a stabilizer that is called... Uh, uh, carbon black to stabilize it against the sun, but that mixture usually is not very perfect. So it's good to get raw material that has already been pre uh, compounded from the manufacturer and is just put in the extruder, you get the HDP pipe. No need of mixing in the factory. There's a lot of inaccuracies. And you'll find that now your pipes will not last as required. Also, insist on these tests. Okay, These pipes, the HDP pipe that you purchase and install in your system has to pass this test. The tensile strength test, the hydrostatic pressure test, uh, burst pressure test, and longitudinal heat reversion test. The, all these tests are very important. Most of people only focus on the, on the hydrostatic pressure tests. These are the things that will, 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 will really affect the quality of the pipe. And if that is not taken into consideration, we'll, be, we'll continuously discuss this non-revenue water in generations to come. Next, next slide, please. Also, insist on use of good welding machines uh, by certified welders. That picture there, as you can see, that's not how to do uh, HDP welding. Uh, this one we've witnessed in very many uh, situations here in Kenya. Quality of the weld pipe is not very, very well done. Okay, next slide, please. Also, we, uh, we have the expertise. WSPs, we find that when they are purchasing pipes, they only insist on a, a certain pressure rating. Let's say, for instance, PN16. 
and they install it uh, through the pipe and they'll find that the cost is very expensive. When we work together, we'll be able to guide you on uh, using different pressure class of pipes or according to different pressure ratings. And that will also bring down the cost. Now, pressure management is very important. Okay, our pipelines uh, in our systems are not pressure regulated, okay? So you find that the pressure in the system is very high. When you have cracks okay, in, the, in the pipeline or holes in the pipeline underground, because of high pressure, they leak, as, I, as you can see there. They'll be leaking. And uh, research has been done uh, in Australia, whereby just by managing pressure, or reducing pressure in the system by 40%, there was a reduction of non-revenue water up to, sorry, there was a reduction of pipe bus up to 55%. Okay? Pressure management uh, is very, very important. We have devices that do this. Uh, do this. Another device that we have is called a level, level control valve. One of the biggest uh, contributors to non-revenue water in our systems here currently also is through uh, leakages from the reservoirs. We don't have proper control of leakages from reservoirs. So uh, just in the next uh, slide, we'll see an anim animation uh, showing you how to control a uh, level in a reservoir or in a tank to prevent those overflows. Okay. So as, you, as it plays, just as I told you, it's very easy to, it's very pictorial and animation very easy to, to see. You know, in, our, in, in the big supply pipelines where you need uh, a supply of big volumes of water into the big tanks and the reservoirs, we don't have, I've not seen a single uh, good mechanism of controlling the levels in our reservoirs here in Kenya. So this is a very good solution. And from this other animation, you can see how it operates. Okay. When you visit our stand, we'll, uh, we will explain this one, these details further. But this technology we have, and we have to lie us with us so that we can uh, offer you the best uh, solution for your system. Next. Oh, this is just, uh, the other one is an animation. This is a real one, a real video so showing you how the, the level control operates. So there's a guy there who will just uh, uh, push down that level, lever, lever and uh, you, can, you can see water is entering the reservoir. Okay. Very good application for very big reservoirs in our water supply systems. Next. Uh, this picture is just demonstrating that in Kenya here, most of our uh, WSPs are supplying water to, to, uh, to the system, as you can see without any pressure control. The, the guy at the, at the uphill uh, uh, place will be <coughs> receiving uh, low pressure, while the guys downstream there will be getting water at very, very high pressure. So we need to maintain and regulate the pressure at that point uh, so that uh, the, the pressure is reduced, usually to around uh, four bars. Okay, next. This one just shows uh, the importance of uh, regulating pressure in a, in a pipeline system. What a pressure-reducing re valve does is that it maintains a constant downstream pressure, okay, regardless of how the pressure upstream changes. When pressure increases or reduces, it will not affect the, the, the downstream uh, uh, utilities or installations. So it will protect against uh, those high pressures that usually occur in our system because of that varying, varying supply. So uh, let me just show you here what happens. So... On the, on the left is the upstream pressure, on the right is the downstream pressure. These are our customers down here. And as you can see now, the pressure on the, on the left is very high. We have maintained it at around four bars. Okay? Look, look at the way the diaphragm is behaving automatically. Like in the morning uh, when consumption is high, the diaphragm will go up to ensure that suppliers get a lot of water. During the night, for example, when uh, uh, People are using less water, as you can see now, those, uh, the demand is very low. Look at what the diaphragm will do. It goes down to reduce, sorry, to reduce the pressure and maintain it at a constant pressure. So we don't have those varying pressures in the system that cost bursts and leakages. Next. Uh, next again. Oh, this is just a real one now, as you can see. The way this upstream pressure is, is changing con conti continuously, increasing and fluctuating, but the downstream is maintained at a constant pressure. Very, very important. 
we have this uh, knowledge and we can rely us with the WSPs to provide you the best pressure reducing valve for your system. Next. This is very important. Uh, up, we lose up to 14% of water in the, in the household due to leakages, leaking taps, and the, uh, the, our meters, even the best meters cannot be able to detect those, those, those uh, volumes that we lose through leakages. If you have an, 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 an estate, for example, in, in Nairobi, an estate like uh, Nyayo Estate, very many apartments within there, if you have these leakages in every household, these are very big contributor to non revenue water. And uh, I'll show you how in, the, in the next video how it, how it works. Just next. You have talked about that one. Next. Yeah. And next again, this one shows all the, we are losing 14% due to leakages. You need to, for the utilities, you really need to capture this data. This is uh, revenue lost. So these are, the, this video will show you what happens. When you have those uh, uh, taps or faucets, okay? Like uh, even in my house, I don't think mine is a, is a perfect one. You love leakages, even in toilets. As you can see, the meter will, due to corrosion and uh, they, may, they usually lose their sensitivity. And there's these small, small drops that they cannot detect, as you can see from that tap, those ones. Imagine that this one taking place in uh, uh, hundreds of households, okay? The meter is, cannot be able to sense those very slow uh, leakages and movements due to that. So there's a gadget that uh, is called uh, unaccounted for uh, UFR, unaccounted for, um, low, an unmetered flow reducer. Okay. There's also a point that it will show you. You see those ones? These leakages are very many in our, in our systems, very common. The meter cannot be able to detect even, you know, there's a leakage in that toilet, as you can see. The meter cannot be able to detect that. So we will show you how to tackle that using a unmeasured flow reducer, UFR. They're also available in plastic, so that's, uh, don't worry about uh, it being in brass. So it's added and before or after the water meter, and then it will now batch these, these, these flow rates inside, that go into the, into the household. When, uh, like for example, at night, when you have those, uh, all, you, don't, you have almost a uh, level pressure in the pipeline system, okay? And those leakages are happening. It will batch those flows, as you can see. Now the UFR is uh, preventing those, uh, it, it, there's a spring there, and uh, it's preventing now water from coming into the system when you have those slow, slow flow rates. Then, when there's enough leakage and there's a difference in pressure, a lot of water will pass, Okay, batching that water and it will trigger the meter to read. Okay, next please. Uh, air management is also a big factor. Uh, in, we commonly, uh, in our systems, we know about air locks. Uh, the dis one of the disadvantages that happens is that the system will underperform. Okay, this will uh, uh, cause uh, the system not to generate uh, revenue as it's supposed to. Supplying their areas that will not get uh, water supply. This is very common in our WSPs that we've studied most of them. Uh, next. Next again. <laughs> you see from the, that pipeline, when you have air in your pipeline system, imagine, this is a hose pipe, but you can imagine now in our, in our WSPs, when you have those big pipes of uh, large diameter pipes, the effect is quite significant as compared to that. Next. This is very interesting because now this one it leads to meter inaccuracies. When you have air in the system, just play, play. This is how a meter should read, okay? And as you can see, there is water flowing, but there are no air bubbles inside. So play next, and you'll see what, what happens when you have air. Customers will complain. They'll be complaining that uh, they're receiving uh, a lot of air in their pipeline system. The, the bill is not matching with the water consumption that they got. So meet any, this, you need also to protect the customer by controlling air in the system. Any inaccuracy is not required for these meters. Any inaccuracy will cause... Uh, non revenue water. Next. And as you can see, these are real uh, uh, 
uh, video that we took. It's only that we don't have the audio, but you can even feel air. You see the way those meter, those, that meter is spinning. It's moving fast and then slowly again, fast and then slowly again, okay? because of presence of air in the system. So presence of air in the system leads to a lot of meter inaccuracies. Next. Air in the system also causes uh, those pressure losses. And air, compressed air in the system will always find uh, the weakest point, usually through fittings. And uh, when you get that, you'll, it will eventually lead to leakages uh, of high, cap high magnitude, and that, that this one leads to physical losses. So air management is very, very important. When you come to our booth there, we'll be demonstrate. We have a very good demonstration unit there to show you. Next. This one I'll just brush through because it has, talked, it has been talked about a lot. We have uh, smart metering solutions. Also where we have um, these mechanical meters that are smart enabled. They, they have gadgets that you attach to them and it will be able to transmit data as required. And uh, this is where we are seeking the partnership uh, of the platform uh, from Safaricom also. Okay? I'll not talk much about it. it has, we have these walk-by solutions where the they meter people just move around or drive by and the gadgets that they have there will collect the data transmitted by those meters. So you don't need to have somebody, it has been talked about, you don't need to have somebody going to read physically because highly likely they'll also sit under a tree and just come up with figures. Next. Just go next until it's over because all these solutions we have and we are still seeking partnership with the various stakeholders to make them a success. Okay about the billing software, all that uh, solutions we have. And uh, it's a pleasure. I think that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Roshi team, for that presentation. It's good we are being told now the practical solutions that we can be able to have about the air measurement, the pressure measurement, and also the materials that you'll be able to give us as far as the workmanship is concerned, as well as the non revenue is concerned. Now, at this time, I would like to call upon a journey of Kerry in capacity building to the sector uh, to be given by the director or his uh, uh, presentation. Mr. Makawa, please. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to recognize our board of directors, our irrigation water secretary, our director. It's a great honor to be given this opportunity to talk about the journey. I hope my slides won't also disappear. I hope they can come that quickly. First and foremost, Kenya Water Institute has a mandate in the water sector to and we also offer services technical services in the water sector which include drilling testing water quality and many other services that as you go through the booth you will be able to see so for today's presentation, I will be talking about the journey that we have gone through in capacity building WSPs in non-revenue water management. We refer to this as unaccounted for water. And there was a project by the German government, the GIZ, GTZ Kewi. It was called Strengthening Practical Skills. And this project was geared towards developing our capacity as an institute for staff where we were to develop courses. Quite a number of courses were developed under this, and some of these were to address the non-revenue water. As the slide comes up, uh, okay, thank you so much, I can now see the slide. Please, the next page. So, as I was saying, 
we had Thank you so much. Under this project, our personnel were trained both locally and internationally. They were trained in countries like South Africa, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, Uganda, other similar projects that we were carrying out. Out of these trainings, we developed short-term programs. Maybe you can list them so that we can see in the next page. So we developed such programs like uh, operation and maintenance of water supply networks, servicing and repairs. All these were related mostly to physical losses. And uh, at that initial stage, the most important thing was to look at, in those earlier years, was to look at the physical losses. We are looking at the journey so as to see why today we have come to focus more on the commercial losses. And uh, all these programs are important, and they kept on being conducted for quite a number of years. And uh, there were also equipments that were bought under this project, and they included metallic pipe locators, non-metallic pipe locator, electronic leak detectors, ultrasonic flow meters, so that they allowed our students to do practicals on the same. And then we had uh, the several WSPs gaining from these trainings. They include Nairobi, Malindi, Nyeri, Eldoret, Kericho, and even Kisumu. Out of four, 2007, we had the French project called Ashe. We now realize the need to revise those courses that majorly focused on the physical losses. Under this program, we conducted training at regional level to 250 participants from Machakos, Nairobi, Kisumu, Kakamega, and Eldoret. This included, of course, design and construction, and also we now focused on metering under this project here. And as you can see in the next slide, we developed an elaborate platform I think Isaac has seen this platform. And uh, when he looked at it, he said, why is it not smart? I told him it's old. <laughs> but he has said he cannot leave it like that. <laughs> so Isaac can attest he has seen it. It has all sorts of meters, ranging from the large ones to the small ones, huge engines, all the way up to the kiosks. It's a whole distribution network, and we have used it very effectively to train students on various practical skills of managing non-revenue. And we now want to move the same platform to the next level, as we shall discuss later. Now, in the year 2007, 2009, we now had a project which we called WAVE, which in collaboration with, funded by the German government, we again looked at non-revenue water, especially in urban utilities in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and Zambia, and South Sudan. What I'm trying to show is that Kewi has both been local and also international in, look and, in looking at this issue of non-revenue. So we have addressed local problems, but also shared with our international partners. 
And I think as we are discussing today, we also have even a party, a, a part of a team from some countries also visiting Kewi today, within these two days. So we have this capacity. And we want to share more with our WSPs so that we develop these capacities further. So we'll work very closely. As you can see, a total of 1,800 participants were trained during this program of WAVE. These numbers, we believe, are few because now we have expanded our facilities. We want to expand these programs further. So if we can move to the next page, some of the areas that we focused as curricula was water balance. So we looked at the components, conducting water balance, zoning, physical losses. We looked at some of those, the courses, the quantifying, reduction, and leak detection. This is where we even had equipments, commercial losses. We looked at all those under our curricula. Now, then the year 2010-2014, of course, JICA comes into play. And under this, we realized that the pedagogical skills of our instructors had to be changed. We now introduce a new component which we call on-the-job training. We realized that we focus so much on the classroom, but we also now needed our technicians to go to the field and work with the real participants and see what causes some of these challenges. So they would teach in class for about five days and take one week to the field and work with the participants. Under this, of course, several WSPs under like Victoria North, Western WSPs and Mombasa benefited from this. And uh, we ended up developing a human resource development plan. And we did actual courses and about 71 staff benefited from the same. Okay, maybe next slide. Now, 2014-2015, we still had another program which was called SNV. And this is also very important because we now focused on technology. Under this program, which now we reduced the number of days to train, we had a new component that came in, which was the GIS. Now, Kewi looked at this training and... Uh, now we had to do it in shorter periods of three days, and we more or less emphasized GIS. And at this point, we now started collaborating very closely with WASPA. Now these programs, we started in collaboration with WASPA, would call participants together and conduct them together. About 200 participants gained from this, which was Malindi, Eldoret, Ololaisa, Machakos, Nakuru, Sibo, and Isiolo. And the field practical station was Kericho. This program has been enhanced and it has been ongoing. And uh, currently, it is called the Strengthening of Capacity Building under JICA again, where the current focus is uh, non revenue water reduction. And under JICA, we now have 300 participants trained, and this is now being upscaled so that we focus more on partnerships with the top management of WSPs to train them further on, on uh, non-revenue. And I think that will mark the end, but uh, I'll also have uh, a small parting shot. I think... Uh, Non-driven water is not an easy job. It requires hard work. And maybe that's where we need to focus, that we need to do a lot of hard work. Because uh, for you to achieve the required levels, you'll do a lot of work. So that's one area that I think we should focus on. Asante, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kerry. Maybe I just to mention again, before I step down, I think uh, I wanted also to mention that uh, in, under the GIS, we 
received licenses from S3 for the GIS uh, training. We received 100 licenses. We believe that capacity is very, very important. We have distributed them in our four campuses. So we are now having higher capacity to train. And we are also looking at uh, future partnerships in terms of uh, smart metering and also some maybe finance-based solutions to look at maybe our finances work in our curricula. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Kerry, for that presentation. Uh, for now, we have been able to articulate some few issues. We just need one more, whereby we had Esli talking about the GIS, we had Doshi talking about equipment, materials, and so forth. Kerry has articulated the issue of uh, capacity building. Now we need one more item as far as the, which is standards. And this one will be tackled by Mr. Otieno to give us about globally accepted standards for the management of non-revenue. Kalibu sana, Mr. Otieno. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. And basically, uh, we are going to be delving a lot more into the role of smart meters. Uh, the role of smart meter technology in the management of non-revenue water. Uh, this is uh, a new area, you know, that is uh, open for exploration. And I believe with the partners that we have, uh, we can easily work together so that we make this a reality. Uh, kindly go to the next uh, slide. Now, the smart uh, meter uh, technology offers uh, new uh, opportunities for controlling um, land revenue uh, water losses. And basically, as we have uh, seen before, uh, most of us have alluded that uh, the mechanical meters, the ones that we have in, most, in many uh, places in our country, actually do not allow for uh, remote meter reading. And so, because we rely so much on meter readers, as we have heard, there is a lot of room for estimation of uh, meter readings and even bills that are generated actually are not accurate. So that is basically the background of what, of the problem that we have. Can we go to the next slide? Now, uh, we have uh, basically looked at uh, uh, I know Safaricom helped us to look at some aspects of the smart meter uh, environment. And basically, a smart meter metering uh, system has a number of components in it. We have a smart meter as an integral part of it. Then we also have a communication module right there. You know, and because it is a smart meter, it is supposed to... Uh, it's supposed to be linked or networked to other devices, either a computer uh, or even a mobile phone. And so there is a network, you know, that we need either GSM as we have from Safaricom and many other offerings that they have in terms of connectivity, connecting the smart read meter to, uh, you connect the smart meter to uh, things like mobile phones and even a computer so that from where you are you can easily you know get to this uh, the next slide please now there's, there's this argument about smart meter being uh, expensive and uh, this is really the challenge that we have I, I had an opportunity to be at the uh, at the Safaricom desk there and I saw a smart meter with a communication module attached to it. And uh, I asked for the cost and I was told this one goes for 55,000 shillings, you know. And uh, when we look at uh, the reality, the cost, the cost, uh, you know, the costs involved right there, then, uh, you know, it really becomes an issue right there. I'm aware of an 
uh, a program that was started by Nairobi Water and Sewage Company some five years ago under the partnership of, uh, uh, under the partnership, uh, it was a joint venture with the World Bank. And uh, that program was called Jisome Mika, where uh, World Bank actually was helping, uh, was helping Nairobi Water to acquire meters for over 3,000 you know, households in uh, Soweto area in Nairobi. And uh, the success of that program was actually anchored on uh, the ability of those customers to actually take their own readings and submit through a mobile network aided by Safaricom, a toll-free you know, line they were supposed to convey meter readings to the Nairobi uh, Water and Sewage Company. Now, the cost of the meters actually was to be shared. Our unit was actually 8,000 shillings, and so under that arrangement, uh, World Bank was to finance 4,000, to provide 4,000 shillings, and then, you know, the remaining 4,000 shillings was to be, to be advanced as a loan to the customer. And so this basically is the background of what we are seeing with the attempt to come up with digital, digital meters in Nairobi, which did not quite work. Uh, we saw that about more than 75% of customers, the over 3,300 of them, over 75% of them defaulted on payments. And uh, because of that, you know, we also have this problem in Nairobi water, which is about 38% uh, non-revenue water. Okay. Yeah. Leading to about 18 million US dollars in lost revenue. And so, when we think, how do you apply this into, you know, how do you bring this into uh, a rural area or even a place where we have a slum area, you know, and uh, in, when we bring in the issue of smart meter, already we have in our slum areas, we have a lot of, uh, you know, water kiosks, which do not have smart meters. And so when we aggregate our customers and we put them into uh, community centers of, let's say, 200 or 500 customers, then you can put one, you know, uh, bulk meter there, which is smart and uh, allow, you know, for consumption data to be acquired from it and of course accurate billing but then when it comes to the cost implications of that then it may as well just be possible that these people come in and they pay uh, a subsidized at a subsidized cost you know for this water so they actually buy it because of the challenges that we have right there uh, let's go to the next uh, slide I will try to be a, a little bit uh, fast now the issue now is what are the cost, you know, what are the costs and benefits that we uh, hope to derive from this? Well, there's a study uh, that was conducted in uh, Brazil, actually in the city of Brasilia, uh, basically highlighting the cost and impacts of smart metering technology in a water distribution system. And actually, this one was conducted at the Environmental Sanitation Company of Brasilia, or what we call CAES, CAES and actually, this program highlighted a number of benefits, as you can see, from cost and source, you know. And uh, basically, it came down to the payback time. If you look at the recovery of the cost that was injected into the program, the pay payback time actually came to about 14.41 months. Slightly, you know, just under one and a half uh, years, you get your money back. And so we are seeing that if our companies can actually implement this program, smart meter technology, and introduce it, meet the cost implications, and accurately apply it in the slum areas as well to reduce revenue losses, then we can actually have payback time much quicker than, or much faster than, um, than imagined. Let's go to the next slide. Eh? Allow me very quickly to talk about some benefits. I highlighted three benefits, leak reduction and prevention. Uh, there is also the reduction of uh, commercial losses. And then we also have uh, the cost 
uh, savings that uh, actually are experienced. Now, uh, on leak reduction, uh, we also have a case study from Australia. That is the port uh, Macquarie Hastings Council uh, South Wales, in South Wales, Australia. And basically, we find that uh, in that area, uh, it was possible to identify changes, large deviations in consumption. So when you have a smart meter for, let's say, in those areas, a smart meter for a month or two, then you can easily profile your customer so that you know within one month or two months, we consume this amount of liters. And so when you see a very a huge jump in consumption, then it tells you that there must be a leakage somewhere, a pipe bus somewhere, or even water theft uh, somewhere. Yeah, let's go to the next one. Eh? And also, uh, we had a look at Nakuru Water and Sanitation Company. Uh, it has been discussed a lot. And this one basically is the potential uh, for commercial loss reduction and the benefits that come from it, looking at the case of Nakuru Water and Sanitation Company. Uh, under the JICA, you know, with support from JICA, as we saw, uh, Nakuru Water was actually uh, able to replace their meters. The normal you know, mechanical meters that we have, and uh, we saw that uh, when they did that, they were able to, uh, there was a 10% increase in connections, actually from uh, in, in the period that that prog program was implemented. That was from uh, 2017, October to May 2019. Uh, we saw that there's a 10% increase in connections and you can see the figures right there. And the monthly build consumption also went up, you know, leading to, leading to a reduction in uh, non-revenue water from about 40 percent to 30 percent as we saw. So this is the potential for uh, non-revenue uh, water reduction further if we implement the smart meter technology right there. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Eh? And finally, we also looked at uh, a case study of uh, water utilities in the District of Columbia area of the United States. And we found a lot of cost reduction in the management of uh, non-revenue water. First of all, we saw a reduction in non-revenue water from 36% to 22%. And that was between 2002 to 2011. And uh, a rise in revenue by 7%, you know. And as a result, also we saw that uh, we also had uh, the, so many vehicles being withdrawn. You know, vehicles that are used by, small, by uh, the people... Uh, who go, the meter readers actually, and we saw that the, uh, the fuel costs actually went down to about 106,000 US dollars annually. So this really highlights the importance of this technology in reducing uh, non-revenue water, in reducing um, the, the, the commercial losses, the physical losses as we saw in, the, in Australia, and of course now uh, we have cost reductions that are, arise from this. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, I think this is just a discussion of already what we have. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Tieno. You can be able to give a, for that presentation. Members, for, the, for that theme, I think we have come to the end of that theme. We may not be able to have the sitting panel discussion, but we can be able to have some few questions, or just about two questions for those who really want, who really feel that they really need to ask something for the presenters. Uh, that is Esli, Doshi, Kewi, and Mr. Otieno. Or even a compliment. And if there is now, then we can be able to go for a break for lunch, and then we come back in the afternoon. It's already afternoon. I'm being reminded it's already afternoon. And we are, in fact, behind schedule. And therefore, uh, if I look aloud, there is no heads up. And therefore, uh, we'd like to break for lunch. Maybe we can be guided by this is here. Stuma. <laughs>